Good evening. Today on this Tuesday, the first week of Lent, I'd like to meditate with you on today's gospel, which is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, last week on Ash Wednesday, we heard some of this gospel. Uh, and we heard about the need to pray, to fast, and to give alms. But in the section of that gospel about prayer, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, was cut out. We get it here in the first week of Lent. The Heavenly Father knows what we need before we even ask him. But Jesus still teaches his disciples this prayer. And sometimes if we struggle to pray, we can at least pray these words, which are Jesus' own words, our Father. God is our Father, Abba. It's a way of saying Daddy. God, God is close, he's not distant. He wants an intimate relationship with us. He is our Father and we are his children, his sons and daughters. Our Father who art in heaven, God is in the heavens and he awaits us there in heaven. We want to journey toward him each and every day. Hallowed be thy name. The name of God is holy. And we hope that everyone would praise and bless the name of God, that God's name would always be on our lips. Even the name Jesus means God saves. God's name is holy. And we hope to spread his holy name to those around us to bring them comfort and strength. Thy kingdom come. In St. Mark's gospel, which we hear throughout this year, Jesus is constantly proclaiming the kingdom. This past Sunday, we heard after his temptation, Jesus began preaching and he said, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. Implicit in this is that not only is God's kingdom close to us, even if it's not here yet in its fullness, but the kingdom of the evil one is in retreat. Signs of the coming of the kingdom of God will be Jesus' healing miracles, his exorcisms, uh, his bringing good news to the poor. All of these things are the signs of his kingdom, which is a kingdom of justice and truth, of peace and love, of holiness and grace. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So often sin is doing what we want and going our own way and not going God's way. Thy will be done to recognize he is God and we are not. To be like the angels, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, who carry out the will of God in obedience to his commandments. And this obedience of carrying out God's will is not a slavish obedience, but an obedience that is rooted deeply in love, the love of the Father. Thy will be done. At the end of, after each mass, the priest prays prayers of thanksgiving. And one of the prayers he prays is called the universal prayer of the church, attributed to Pope Clement XI. And there's a stanza in that prayer um, that says, I will what you will, I will it because you will it, I will in, in the way in which you will it, I will it for as long as you will it. So we pray for God's will. Jesus himself came to do the will of his heavenly Father. And he knew the will of his heavenly Father because he was deeply committed to moments of prayer, of solitude, to be away with his Father, to regain strength. He continues, give us this day our daily bread, there are so many people who hunger for their daily bread just to have their material needs met. But there are also our spiritual needs. Here in Greek, the word epiousios is used, super substantial bread, uh, an allusion to the Eucharist. Each day, while we want our material bread, we want the bread from heaven, the bread of life, which is not ordinary bread, but is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Forgive us our trespasses, Lent certainly is a time for mercy and to receive God's grace and forgiveness. But there's a catch, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Oftentimes we are stubborn, we are hardened 
in our hearts, and we do not want to forgive those who have previously wounded us. And yet Jesus, at the conclusion of today's gospel, warns us, if you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your transgressions. So if we want mercy, we also have to show mercy. And if God shows us mercy, which is his gift to us, we should not hoard that, but rather we should share the gift with those around us. Lives changed by the mercy, by a merciful encounter with God who is our Father. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. Who is one person who has truly hurt you? Ask God for the grace to be able to forgive them. Ask God to be close even to that person. Jesus, even from the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Jesus himself knew temptation. We heard it this past Sunday. He was tempted by the devil in the desert. But he overcame him and he triumphed him, not through force, but through humility. By recognizing that man does not live by bread alone, but not by every word that comes forth by, from the mouth of God. By realizing that we should not put the Lord our God to the test. Lead us not into temptation. Do not bring us to the test. We will be tested. But St. Paul says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. We can even overcome temptation. God never forces us to sin. And then finally, the last plea, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. In fact, that's what Jesus does when he, he dies for us on the cross. He delivers us and he offers us the promise of everlasting life if we would be faithful to him, if we would embrace his cross. Deliver us from the evil one who prowls about the world seeking the ruin of souls. But Jesus is stronger than that strong man and can bind him up and set us free. Yes, prayer is sometimes difficult, but Jesus gives us the words to pray. Let us never forget this first of prayers, the so-called Lord's Prayer. And to remember also that God is the Father who is close to us and who never ceases to hear the cries of his children. May the one God and Father of us all bless you with his peace.